Today I want to start with uh, kind of where we picked up from yesterday and get some abstract stuff out of the way. What we, what we covered in class on Friday, I said yesterday, what we covered in class on Friday is that the vertex and the axis of symmetry of a parabola are the average of the two x-intercepts because of the symmetry of the parabola. Okay, so the vertex always takes place smack dab in the middle of the x-intercepts, even if the x-intercepts are imaginary, even if there aren't any, the zeros or the roots of that quadratic, if you average those zeros, you're still going to get the symmetry point for the parabola. All right, so let's take that fact to the abstract, and let's go back to our um, standard form for a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c. What are the two roots of this equation? The two zeros, the two x-intercepts, what are they? We solved it. It's right over there on the board. What are the two solutions here? x equals negative b plus or minus, now you all with me, the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by what? 2a. Okay. The solutions to the standard form quadratic equation, the roots, the zeros, the x-intercepts, is the quadratic formula. Okay. Now, keeping in mind what we were talking about on Friday, the axis of symmetry, right, the axis of symmetry and the x-coordinate of the vertex come from the average of these two x-intercepts. Right. So if we take the average of these two things, that means I'm going to take these two values and average them together. What's negative b plus square root of b squared minus 4a? C all over 2a plus, again, another one, negative b plus, excuse me, minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you divide all of that by 2, that's going to give us an average. Now what happens, excuse me there, what happens when we add these two terms together? What parts go away? The square root parts, right? Because I have a common denominator of 2a, I can add these together. This and this cancel each other out because it's plus and minus. They're opposites of each other, so their sum is zero. So when I simplify this, it very quickly becomes um, negative b minus b, that's negative 2b, or not, there you go, over 2a, and all that's going to be divided by 2. That's kind of a weird thing, but that's what we get. Negative b over 2a all divided by 2. Okay. And what that simplifies to be is negative b over 2a. Okay, so if we have a parabola in standard form, the average of the two x-intercepts is always going to be negative b over 2a. That's a time saver, isn't it? We don't have to find the zeros and find the average. If we use the generic formula, the average of the two x-intercepts, negative b over 2a is the average of the x-intercepts. Okay, y'all give me just one second here. So this, this really gives us a, a, a shortcut of sorts, right? If we have a uh, parabola, or excuse me, a quadratic expression, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The axis of symmetry, right, the axis of symmetry is 
x equals negative b over 2a. We just showed that by averaging the two zeros of the quadratic formula. And this means that the vertex point, the vertex is, the x value is negative b over 2a, and the y value is whatever you get when you plug in negative b over 2a into the function. Okay, and this is going to tie directly into what we're doing today. Okay, um, Vertex is negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. And we, and we kind of saw that with the two homework problems that we just worked, right? When the, the solutions were, uh, I forget what they were, 8 over 8 plus or so, minus something over 2. 8 over 2 was b over 2a. Negative b over 2a ends up being the the average of the two zeros, okay? So negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. So if we went back and looked at that um, number five from the homework using these two formulas, what was number five again? x squared plus 4x plus x. f of x or y equals x squared plus 4x plus 8. Plus eight. Okay, the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Look, negative b over 2a, that's negative 4 over 2 times 1, that's negative 2. Just that quickly. All right? And then you plug that in and you get negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8 plus 8. Negative 2 squared is 4. So it's much easier than finding the two x-intercepts and then averaging the two. But I wanted you to have that tool because, again, that tool is what we use to derive this. Okay? The reason that I love completing the square so much is because you <coughs> use completing the square to derive the quadratic formula. You guys are growing up into algebra students. You need to know where things come from, not just memorize a formula. Where does negative b over 2a come from? It's the average of the two zeros from the quadratic formula. If you add those two things together, the plus or minus part cancels itself out, and what are you left with? Negative b over 2a, right? So that's the average of the two things. All right? Now, what, what we're going to do today is uh, graphing quadratics using vertex form of a parabola. Now, this is a little bit different form. and In times past, I've started with this method, but I wanted to kind of build this method a little bit because I'm going to give you a tool uh, to look at some things. So if we have y equals AX a, a times x minus h squared plus k, This is a formula, and I want to remind you guys of a fact about formulas. If you have a negative sign in a formula, subtraction sign in a formula, any value that goes in there will change, and any value that comes out of there will change. So that negative sign changes values when you put numbers in. It changes the value when you pull it out. Okay, The plus K, because it's positive, its sign won't change. Whatever's there is what's there when you put it in. It's there when you take it out. Okay, so uh, keep in mind, and that's kind of the tricky part of this that you have to be careful with. In this form, HK is the vertex. Okay? In this form, the A value is the same as it would be in standard form. That is huge. Okay, the A value does not change. It's the same as the A value would be if we put this into standard form. Right, and that makes perfect sense. Right, if we expand X minus H squared, if you multiply X minus H times X minus H, you're going to get X squared, right? 
x times x is x squared, and then a times x squared would be ax squared. So you get the ax squared right back. Whatever that is, is the same value it would be if we were in standard form. And all this is going to play into our hands, right? We're going to tie these two things together. So there are two ways we can put quadratic functions into vertex form. The first way is completing the square. You notice this, we have a completing the square, we have a completed square right here. X minus H squared. The second way, and I think most of you are going to prefer this way, we're going to do it both ways, is find the vertex and use the original A value. And that's not a misplaced article. That's the A from standard form, AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, now, now here's what I mean by find the vertex. All right, HK is the vertex in vertex form. What's the vertex in standard form? We just found it, right? Negative B over 2A and F of negative B over 2A the function evaluated at negative b over 2a. So we can find h, right? What is h? h is negative b over 2a. What is k? It's the, you plug it in and find out what y is when the h is negative b over 2a. And the a value is going to be the same. So if you can find h and k, then you can put it into standard form by finding the vertex first and then putting it into vertex form that way. All right. But let's, let's practice a little bit of uh, this. Um, but, but before we do, I want to get one more fact, guys, that, that we do this. All right. So we've just established here that, let me back up, vertex form and standard form both share the same a value, right? So they have that in common. What does a tell us? In the parabola, what, uh, what does the parameter a, what effect does it have on the parabola? Anybody, somebody. Wake up Monday. What does a do? What's the difference between um, y equals yeah, y equals x squared and y equals negative 3x squared? What's the difference between those two graphs? Say it again. Yeah, it, it vertically stretches it, right? It, it makes it skinnier or wider. You know, it, it has those effects on it. What else does it do? What does the negative do? It flips it up or down, right? If it's negative, the parabola opens like this, and this one would be really skinny because of the 3x squared, and this one opens up and not as skinny because it's just 1x squared. Right? So that's one of the things. So the a value, the a value affects the, what we call the stretch, okay, the stretch and the orientation. A affects the stretch and the orientation. By orientation, we mean does it open up or does it open down? Sorry, my iPad doesn't want to write right there. Stretch and orientation is what A value affects. But how much does it affect it? How do we determine how much it affects it? Let's do a little experiment. Let's look at y equals x squared, y equals 2x squared, and y equals 3x squared. We'll just do, we're just going to do a, a, a quick numerical analysis of these three functions. y equals x squared. We're going to use 
we're going to use uh, negative 2, 1, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 on all three functions. So y'all fill these in for me. What's this going to be if we write this down? 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4, right? So what's our symmetry point? On all three of these, our symmetry point is going to be 0, 0, 0. So describe what the parabola does if we go left 1. If we go left 1 from 0, the parabola goes up 1, right? If we go left 2, the parabola goes up 4 from the vertex point. Y'all aren't seeing that. Let me show you. 0, 0 is the vertex. If we go to the left 1, we go up 1, right? If we go to the right 1, we also go up 1. If we go right 2, we go up 4. We take a jump, right? If we go left 2, we go up 4. All right, so it's left 1, up 1, or left 2, up 4. I said left and drew right. Left 1, up 1, left 2, up 4. What's, what's the relationship? If we went to 3, what would it be? 3 squared is 9. So really these are just the squares, right? 1, 2, 4, 9, 16. So what effect is the 2 going to have on our original graph over there? On our parent graph, x squared, what is the 2 going to do? Doubles what? It's going to double all the y values, right? So 0, 0 is going to remain unchanged. Left 1, instead of going up 1, we're going to be going up 2. If we go left 2, instead of going up 4, we're going to go up 8. So it doubles the squares. Left 1 up 2. Left 2 up 8, right? And the same thing would happen on the right side. Um, if we go right 1, we'll go up 2. If we go right 2, we'll go up 8. If we went right 3, what's 3 squared? And 9 times 2 is 18. This was just 9, right? So what is the 3x squared going to do to things? It's going to triple everything. 0, 0 stays the same. When we go left 1, instead of going up 1, like we did in our parent function, we'll go up 3. When we go left 2, instead of going up 4, like we did in our parent function, we'll go up 12. So this is 3 times the squares. And this symmetry is going to work for us, right? If we find the vertex point, we can use the A value to find all the rest of the points. If A is 1, what do we do from the vertex point? Left 1, up 1, right 1, up 1. Left 2, up 4, right 2, up 4. Every time. If the A value is 1, it doesn't matter what B and C are. It's left 1, up 1, right 1, up 1. And if we are using a 2x squared, it doesn't matter. Again, it does not matter what the other values are. From the vertex point, we'll go left 1, up 2, right 1, up 2, and then left 2, up 8, etc. So if A value is 2, the stretch factor is always the same. Good? Now if it's a negative, then instead of going up, we would go down. Left 1, down 2. Right 1, down 2. Okay? So we're going to use the A value here to get us some more points. In our homework last night, what, what did we find? We found x-intercepts, y-intercepts, but sometimes that does doesn't give us a lot of points to work with. But if we can find the vertex and we know this A value, this stretch factor, it's always going to do the same thing. The A always does the same thing regardless of what B and C are. I don't care if B is 26. The square is what controls the shape of the graph. Okay? The square. X squared plus 236,000 X plus a million, 
the x squared still has complete control over the shape of the graph. Not the linear factor and not the constant. Those two things just determine where the vertex is. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples of this. We just uh, looked at the graph of y equals x squared. So we're not going to have a look at that again. But first of all, I want us to put these in vertex form. So what would vertex form of this look like? If we were just getting really ticky about putting this into vertex form, what would it be? Y equals, what's our A value? One. One. Our H, zero, plus zero, right? Is everybody good with that? No, yes, kind of. This is the same as this. So the vertex is zero, zero. Left one, up one, right one, up one. 2, up 4, right, left 2, up 4, sketch the graph, we get something that looks like this, if we wanted to go 3 to 9, we could, something, somewhere up there, all right, so that's our basic graph, all right, um, this one is already in vertex form, right, vertex form is what, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The vertex is hk. So what's the vertex going to be from this equation? Negative 2, 6. You have to remember, vertex there is h. This is negative h, so this is always going to change signs. Okay, negative 2, 6 is the vertex point. That's going to be left 2 and up 6, right? Vertex is negative 2, 6. And the stretch is 1. The A value is 1. So this thing is going to just do what our basic parabola is going to do from that point. Uh, right 1, up 1. Left 1, up 1. Right 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4. Left 2, up 1, 2, one, two, three, four. All right, so the graph is going to look like this. All right, if your A value is one, that means left and right up one, up one, left and right two, up four. Okay, so we can always generate those other points just knowing what the stretch factor does to the parabola. Okay? And I'm guessing this is new, that y'all haven't seen these the stretch factor and, and seen this. Have you seen this before? It's not a normal approach in Algebra 2, but I want you to kind of get more accustomed to examining things uh, like this. All right? f of x equals 2 times x minus 5 squared. Is this in vertex form already? What's vertex form? y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. If this is in vertex form, what's my k value? Zero, right? There's a plus zero hanging out, always. So what's the vertex of this parabola? Five, zero is correct. That's right here. Right? My stretch factor... My A value is 2, okay? And that means instead of going left and right 1 and up 1, we're going to go left, right 1, and up 2. So from the vertex point, you go right 1, up 2, somewhere there, left 1, and up 2. Right? And instead of going left or right up 2 and up 4, we'll go left or right 2 and up Eight, All right? So left, right, two. This is right, two, and up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same thing on the other side. Left, two, and up. Two, eight. And that gives us the stretch 
of this graph. So it's a lot skinnier than just the regular x squared graph is. Now we have specific points here. This is this is becoming more of a graph than a sketch, right? Because we're actually using, we're being a lot more specific about the stretch factor of the graph and what A does to things. Okay, now what if it's not in vertex form? What if we have a graph like this, not in vertex form, and we want to put it in vertex form? In our initial notes, I told you that there's two ways that we can put it into the vertex form. We can complete the square, right, which is not difficult, and we can also find the vertex point and just convert it that way. Use negative b over 2a and f of negative b over 2a. But let's let's put let's use completing the square. We'll do, we're going to do both ways, but let's complete the square. All right. First of all, what is my a value going to be here? What's a? Negative one, right? So I have to factor that out of these two x terms, and that'll make it x squared minus six x. The minus five is just going to come over here and hang out. Now, I know you did this with conic sections in Algebra 2, because I tutored some of you, not some of you, well, maybe some of you on this skill, but half of negative 6 squared is what? Negative 3 squared is nine. positive 9, right? Now, because of this negative 1, I'm really adding what to this side of the equation? adding negative 9, right? So to counteract that, I need to add positive 9 out there. Why negative 9 and positive 9 on the same side? What we've been doing is doing the same thing on opposite sides, right? So if we're completing the square all on the same side, the only thing I'm allowed to add to that side is 0. So negative 9 and positive 9 cancel each other out, and I haven't really changed the exact uh, value of my original equation. All right, so y equals negative 1 times x minus 3 squared plus 4. Okay? Now, before we graph that, let me show you the other way to put it into vertex form. All right. If we're going to put it into vertex form, the other way to do this is to find the vertex. Right? The vertex is negative b over 2a, and then the function evaluated at negative b over 2a. And that will be my h value and my k value. Right? What's negative b over 2a would be what? Negative 6 over 2 times negative 1, which is 3. If x is 3, y is negative 9 plus 18 minus 5. That's equal to what? 4. So my vertex is 3, 4. That means h is 3, k is 4. My a value is negative 1, x minus h squared plus k. Oops, plus 4. So you can complete the square to put it into vertex form. That's useful because we're going to be completing the square with our other conic sections. But you can also find the vertex and plug the vertex into the vertex form. Right? I, I think in this instance it's a little easier to find the vertex. But you can pick or choose which one that you prefer. All right. Either way, graph this. What's the vertex point? We're almost done. 3, 4, right? That's right in this vicinity. 3, 4. 
Man, my, my iPad's not cooperating today. Come on, iPad. 3-4. Come on, you can do it. 3-4. That's right. Close enough. From there, instead of up, we're going down, right? Left one, down one. Left two, down four. One, two, three, four. That's three, three, isn't it? I missed my X again. Three, four is up here. So left one, down one. Right one, down one. Left two, down four. Right two, down four. And we can sketch the graph like that. Okay. Using the stretch factor and the vertex. All right, one more. Bless you. Okay. Y equals 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. We're going to complete the square and do the vertex. I'm going to do completing the square first. Um, if we're going to complete the square on this one, we have to first factor the 2 out of the x squared and the 2x. Just leave the negative one alone. Right? Is everybody clear on that? Half of 2 is 1, and 1 squared is plus 1, right? But what I've really added here is 2 times 1, so I've added 2, so to keep the equation in balance, what do I need to do on the outside of the parentheses? Subtract 2. Right. Add 2, subtract 2, that means I've got a net change of 0. I've added 0, which is the only thing we're allowed to add to one side of the equation is 0. I'm, if I add 2 on this side, that means I add 2 on this side, but that needs to come over to the other side and be minus 2 to put it in vertex form. All right, so we've got y equals 2 times x plus 1 squared minus 3. That means the vertex is negative 1, negative 3. Somewhere right about there. Stretch factor here is 2, which means we'll go right 1 up 2, left 1 up 2, right 2 up 8, left 2 up 8 from the vertex point. And that's going to give me a much thinner looking parabola. All right, quickly, negative b over 2a is negative 4 over 2 times 2, which is negative 1, right? And then if I plug negative 1 in, I get 2 times negative 1 squared plus 4 times negative 1 minus 1. I get uh, 2 times 2 is just 2 plus 2 minus 4, so that's negative 3. So there's my h value. Here's my k value. My a value is 2. y equals a times x minus negative 1 squared plus k. So you can use the negative b over 2a to find the vertex and put it in vertex form without completing the square. It's good to be able to do both. All right, any questions on this? This is not uh, your homework, Will. I'm going to grab you.